Hey everyone! Welcome back to Minty Kids! Today we're going to be reading the complete series of SEL books by Dr. Daniela Owen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more stories and playlists like this one. Anyway, let's get to it! Today we're going to be reading this wonderful book called Right Now I Am Brave, written by Dr. Daniela Owen and illustrated by Gulce Basik. Brought to us and published by Puppies, Dogs, and Ice Cream, Inc. Check the description below for a link which will take you to their site so you may purchase your own copy for your home library. Anyway, let's get to it. Sometimes, things can feel really scary. These may be things that other kids find scary too. Or they may be things that most kids don't find scary at all. When the things we find scary are not actually dangerous, then it's time to be brave. It's not dangerous. It's okay to be scared, but you've got this. You can do it. You can handle it. Being brave is about facing something that is scary or hard for you to deal with. Sometimes we choose to be brave because it's the right thing to do. Leave him alone. Firefighters, astronauts, and soldiers are all brave. And their jobs are really hard. When something feels scary, our brains may tell us to run away, go and hide, or stay away no matter what. But we don't always have to listen to what our brains tell us. Sometimes our brains play tricks on us and tell us something is scarier than it actually is. That slide looks like it's 1,000 feet high. You can't do it. Think back. Have you ever been worried, nervous, or scared to do something new? Then once you did it, you were so glad you did. Being brave is tough. It's tough for firefighters, astronauts, and soldiers. It can be tough for kids too, but you can do it. You are brave. Go for it. Be courageous. You've got this. One way to be brave is to talk to yourself in an encouraging way. When your brain is saying, not so fast, tell yourself, I can handle it. Then you will feel much more confident and brave. How about you give it a try? I can do this. I am brave. Even though I feel scared right now, I can do this. I am brave. Cheering ourselves on is one of the best ways to help us be brave. You're courageous. Go for it. You've got this. Another way to help ourselves feel brave is by making a plan to do something brave. When we set a goal and make a promise to ourselves, we are more likely to achieve our goal. Say hi to two new people at ballet class on Saturday. When the time comes to do the brave thing, remember, I made a promise to myself, and I'll be very glad that I kept my promise. What helps the most is doing something brave and discovering that you can handle it. Once we do something brave, we are always glad we did. We feel extremely proud of ourselves, which makes it a tiny bit easier to be brave the next time. A great thing to do after we have been brave is to reward ourselves. Being brave is tough, and when we accomplish tough things, it's nice to give ourselves a reward. We can reward ourselves with a pat on the back, a self-hug, or by telling ourselves how great it is that we chose to be brave. You're a champion! Remind yourself, right now, I am brave. Right now, I am brave. We're going to be reading this wonderful book called Right Now, 
I am fine. Written by Dr. Daniela Owen and illustrated by Gulche Basik. Brought to us and published by Puppies, Dogs, and Ice Cream, Inc. Check the description below for a link which will take you to their site so you may purchase your own copy for your home library. Anyway, let's get to it. Sometimes bad things happen in the world. And they make us feel scared. Sometimes these things make us worry about what is going to happen next. Our family, friends, and neighbors may all be affected. All of this worry can make us feel terrible. Our tummies may seem like they're tied up in knots. It may feel hard to breathe, like an elephant is sitting on our chest. Our heads may be so full of worried thoughts that we can't concentrate on anything else. But when this happens, it is important to remind ourselves that we are fine right now. To help yourself calm down, start by closing your eyes. Then take three deep breaths. Breathe in slowly and breathe out slowly. In and out. Now, Keep your eyes closed. Gently wrap your arms around your body and give yourself a big, warm hug. You can handle this because right now you are here and you're not in any danger. Let your body relax a little. Drop your shoulders and wiggle your toes. You don't have to be on high alert at this moment. Let worrying thoughts drift out of your mind. The bad things may still be happening, but you don't have to worry about them this minute. Because right now, you are fine. What else can you do to relax? Can you draw a pretty picture? Can you look out the window at the beautiful world outside? Can you read a funny, exciting, or adventurous book? Can you play a fun game or solve a tricky puzzle? Can you cuddle a furry pet or a favorite stuffed animal? Then remind yourself, right now, I am fine. Right now, I am fine. We're going to be reading this wonderful book called Right Now, I Am Kind. Written by Dr. Daniela Owen and illustrated by Gulche Basik. Brought to us and published by Puppies, Dogs, and Ice Cream, Inc. Check the description below for a link which will take you to their site so you may purchase your own copy for your home library. Anyway, let's begin reading. Sometimes we just want to think about ourselves. We want what we want. We want to do what we want to do. And we don't want to think about other people. But we live in a world with lots of other people. Many of us have families at home. Classmates and teachers in our schools. And friends in our neighborhoods, towns, and cities. It's important to be aware of and kind to all of these other people. When we pay attention to other people, it helps us to be more aware of our own actions. And our actions are important because they can affect others. Thank you! 
There are a few simple ways to be mindful of our actions and to be good, kind citizens in our communities. Whether it's in our homes, in our neighborhoods, or in our schools. The first way to be kind is to look around you and be aware of other people wherever you go. When you notice who's around you, you can see whether you need to change your actions based on those other people. A second way to be kind is to ask people if they need any help. How can I help? Even though you may prefer to do something else, after a short time, you will find joy in helping others. Contributing makes us feel more valuable as people. And the people we help will really appreciate it. Thank you. A third way to be kind is to show people you care through random acts of kindness. When we think about people in our community and do kind things for them, even if they didn't ask us to, we feel connected to them. Try looking around you and seeing if there are any kind things that you can do. Like putting toys away, giving a thoughtful gift, or taking care of a pet. Sometimes it can take extra time and effort to notice what's happening around us and to do something helpful. But practicing this is worth it because caring for those in our communities turns us into kind people. So remind yourself, right now, I am kind. Right now, I am kind. We're going to be reading this wonderful book called Everyone Feels Angry Sometimes, written by Dr. Daniela Owen and illustrated by Gu Che Bei Brought to us and published by Puppies, Dogs, and Ice Cream, Inc. Check the description below for a link which will take you to their site so you may purchase your own copy for your home library. Anyway, let's get to it. Anger is a big feeling. We can feel angry when we don't get what we want, when something isn't fair, or when we have to do things we don't want to do. I want it. No. Anger starts deep inside of us and grows and grows. Even though it doesn't feel good, it's okay to feel angry. Everyone feels angry sometimes. But when our anger gets too big, it explodes out of us. In fact, anger is like lava and our bodies are like volcanoes. When we are calm, the anger stays inside of our volcanoes. When we are calm, our volcanoes are cool and inactive. But when we get really angry, these feelings come bursting out hot and destructive. This can make us feel out of control, like an erupting volcano. When our volcanoes explode, we may stomp our feet, pound our fists, kick, scream and yell, throw things, rip things, and break things. Sound familiar? Not fair! It's helpful to think about our anger in four levels. Low, medium, high, and exploding. When we feel calm, our bodies are relaxed. We speak at a normal volume and our thoughts are clear in our heads. Our anger level is low. When we get a little angry, our bodies start to feel tense. Our voices get louder or faster. 
Our thoughts start to speed up and become focused on the thing that is bothering us. Our anger level is medium. When we get angrier, our bodies and faces feel warm. Our hands become fists. Our voices get louder. We repeat the same thing again and again. Our thoughts become focused on what's making us angry. Our anger level is high. When we get the angriest, our faces and bodies feel hot and tight. Our voices yell or scream. Our thoughts get jumbled in our heads, and we usually can't focus on anything at all. Our anger level is exploding. But the good news is, there are steps you can take to control your anger volcano. Step one. Notice your lava level. Are your cheeks getting warm? Are your hands forming fists? Do you feel like you could scream? Your lava is heating up. It's time for step two. Step two: Clasp your hands behind your back. Take ten steps away from the situation or person who is making you angry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Step three: Take ten slow, deep breaths. Breathe in slowly, then breathe out slowly. Count each breath until you finish all ten. In, out. Step four: Move your body. Moving our bodies in non-angry ways helps us release anger. Do twenty-five jumping jacks, run up and down stairs, do ten cartwheels or somersaults, put on some music and dance around. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you move your body a lot. It's always a good idea to take a break from whatever is making you angry. If it's a person, tell them that you'll talk to them later. If it's a game or activity, stop doing it for now. You can finish playing later. It doesn't have to be a long break; just long enough for you to calm your anger volcano. We often feel angry when something seems unfair. If we continue to focus on the unfair thing. Our anger and jealousy will grow and grow. But if we choose to think about something positive instead, our anger will get smaller and smaller. High score, six million! You are a winner. Once you practice these steps a few times. You will start to feel more and more in control of your anger volcano. Being able to control our anger makes us feel good. Remember, everyone feels angry sometimes. Steps to calm down. Step one: Notice your lava level. Is it low, medium, or high? Step two. Take ten steps away from the situation. Step three: Take ten slow, deep breaths. Step four: Move your body. Movement helps release anger from our bodies. Well, everyone, that's pretty much it for today. But thank you so much for reading with me. And remember these four steps next time you get angry. We're going to be reading this wonderful book called. Everyone feels anxious sometimes. Written by Dr. Daniela Owen and illustrated by Gulce Basic. Brought to us and published by Puppies, Dogs, and Ice Cream Inc. Check the description below for a link which will take you to their site, so you may purchase your own copy for your home library. Anyway, let's get to it. Lots of different things can make us feel anxious. 
like being in new situations, performing in front of others, or competing in sports. We can also feel anxious when we're running late, meeting people for the first time, or playing a game that we're not very good at. Feeling anxious may make us want to run away as fast as we can, or it may make us freeze up, feel like we can't move, or sometimes like we can't even speak. Hi, I'm Juan. Ah,、uh, anxiety can even make us act angry and cause us to kick, scream, push, cry. Or break things. It can make our bodies feel bad in all kinds of different ways: sweaty, dizzy, tight, hot, shaky, or tingly. Even though it doesn't feel good, it's okay to feel anxious. Everyone feels anxious sometimes. When we feel anxious, it is important to know that we can help our brains and bodies calm down. We can handle whatever is making us feel this way. I can handle this. If something specific is making you feel anxious or worried. It can be helpful to identify what that thing is. Then you can figure out why it's making you feel anxious. Worries: number one, school play; number two, hard math problems; number three, the monkey bars; and number four, trying to make new friends. Once you have figured out why you feel anxious. Then you can come up with a list of solutions and pick the best one. Worry, school play. Why I'm worried? Don't have lines memorized yet. Solutions: one, cry on bed; two, practice hard until I know them by heart. But sometimes when we feel anxious, there isn't a problem to solve. When this happens, try focusing your attention on something else. You can use your five senses to help notice what's happening right now, in the present moment: taste, smell, hearing, sight, and touch. Start with your sense of hearing. Get comfortable. Close your eyes. And try paying attention to all of the sounds around you. If you listen carefully, you can hear sounds up close and far away, sounds that are loud and sounds that are quiet, sounds that keep going and sounds that happen only once. Sit for a few minutes and listen to what you can hear. <laughs> Another thing to do when you feel anxious is to look around you and try to spot everything that is your favorite color. Blue book, blue car, blue blanket. You can do this in your home, in the car, at school, or outside. Try to keep looking for things that are your favorite color. Until you feel a little calmer, you can also use your mind to do something that takes a little bit of brain power. Try singing a favorite song, doing connect the dots, or playing an alphabet naming game. A is for aardvark, B is for bear, C is for cat. The anxious thoughts may still be in your head, but that's okay. You can choose to focus on something else instead. 
the more you practice handling your anxiety, the easier it will become. Remember, everyone feels anxious sometimes. We're going to be reading this wonderful book called Everyone Feels Sad Sometimes, written by Dr. Daniela Owen and illustrated by Gulce Basic, brought to us and published by Puppies, Dogs, and Ice Cream, Inc. Check the description below for a link which will take you to their site so you may purchase your own copy for your home library. Anyway, let's get to it. Sadness can make us feel like a big, dark cloud is hovering above us. We may feel sad because we were left out, we lost a game, we failed at something we tried to do, or we couldn't do something that we really wanted to do. Sadness may cause us to stay in bed. It may cause us to yell at the people around us. Leave me alone. Or it may cause us to hide and avoid upsetting thoughts and situations. Even though it doesn't feel good, it's okay to feel sad. Everyone feels sad sometimes. The good news is, there are things that we can do to make us feel happier. Ready to hear an important secret? What we do changes how we feel. When we are sad, doing something that we enjoy and are good at makes us feel happier. Try making pipe cleaner animals, shooting hoops, or creating an imaginary world to play in. Another thing that can make us feel happier is doing something kind for someone else. Try making a homemade card for a grandparent, delivering soup to a sick neighbor, or helping out a friend or sibling. Dear Grandma, I love you. I hope you're having a good day. Happiness is contagious in a good way. When we do something nice that makes someone else happy, we feel happy too. Thank you for the card. You're welcome. Here's something else important for you to know. What we think affects how we feel. Thought, then feeling. When we are feeling down, we can switch our thoughts. Just like coins have two sides, thoughts also have two sides. Let's say you have something hard to do. Your brain might have a thought like, This is impossible! I'll never be able to finish in time! I'll never be able to do it. But you can switch your thought to, I can give it a try. I might be able to do it. I'll just start and see what happens. I might be able to do it. And guess what? Even if you don't accomplish the task, just by trying to do the hard thing, you succeed at trying. I tried. When you succeed, you should tell yourself, I did it! Noticing our successes makes us feel good about ourselves and makes us want to try again next time. I did it! Remember, sad feelings are like dark clouds. They always pass by and there are sunnier skies ahead. You have the power to feel happier. Remember, everyone feels sad sometimes. Well, everyone, that's pretty much it for today, but thank you so much for reading with me. 
This is an activity page the book has at the very end. It's called Turn That Frown Upside Down. Fill in the bubbles below with the things you can do to feel happier when you are sad. Feel free to try this at home. And don't well everyone, we've finally reached the end of this playlist. Thank you for following along with me. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos and stories like these. Bye! Mendicants! Making your name fun! <laughs>